2018 was the best year ever to be a backseat gamer. Graphics got another step closer to being a Pixar movie. Storytelling got another step closer to being a Quentin Tarantino movie. You had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. And the drama was one step closer to being a disaster movie. But in between watching my boyfriend do this, and this, Relax and I'll do my best. She better be grabbing a soap. I got to see another side of gaming that has also never been better. Indie games. Independent developers have been releasing some of the purest video game experiences available for years. Also, some of the worst. This is a game where you love a horse man. And in 2018, there were three games my boyfriend played that rivaled even the most AAA of AAAs. Celeste, Dead Cells, and Hollow Knight were all released on the Nintendo Switch this year, and our apartment was filled with beautiful art direction, goosebump-inducing soundtracks, and the noises a grown man makes when he's mad at a toy. Uh. But this isn't a review of Celeste, Dead Cells, and Hollow Knight. This is a review of what it's like to live with someone who plays Celeste, Dead Cells, and Hollow Knight. When Celeste was released in January, my boyfriend had just given up on certain moons in Mario Odyssey. So naturally, these not difficult at all to collect strawberries were a perfect way for him to relax. The difference though is that the difficulty of like jumping rope isn't a part of Mario's struggle. Mario isn't Corbin Blue from Disney Channel original movie Jump In. What's this about Double Dutch? Nothing. But in Celeste, the difficulty is the story. Madeline knows how hard climbing the mountain will be. That's the point of doing it. The self-doubt and straight up anxiety my boyfriend felt during his playthrough were meant to connect him with the main character in a way I've never seen before. Madeline wants to conquer Celeste Mountain the same way gamers want to conquer Celeste the game. The hands-on experience of overcoming obstacles inside a video game combined with a character arc about overcoming obstacles inside yourself is not only genius game design that keeps players moving forward when the game gets tough, but also quietly teaches them to keep moving forward when life gets tough. Telling a story about physical and emotional emotional perseverance while requiring the audience to actually do the persevering is something only video games can accomplish and Celeste is a triumph. The award goes to Celeste. If Celeste has helped you come to terms with uh, mental illness, you deserve credit for that. Uh, that change came from inside of you and uh, you're capable of a lot more. Thank you. But will watching someone else play make you want to conquer Madeline's anxiety and depression? Yeah, only instead of making you want to climb the mountain, it will make you want to jump off of it. I'm sorry, Celeste fans, I got really uptight watching my boyfriend play this game. It would be obvious what to do, but still take him like a dozen tries. So I would end up yelling and coaching him as if I even knew the buttons. He would say, then you try, and I'd be like, no, no, and go back to angrily petting the cat. I did love how excited and proud of himself he would be after completing certain stages. By the time that happened though, my butt cheeks were so tired from clenching that I needed a lay down. While Celeste's frustrating to watch gameplay was redeemed by its innovative storytelling and all-around cuteness, Alan! the next indie game that my boyfriend became obsessed with beating was not. I don't like Dead Cells. I know it won Best Action Game at the 2018 Game Awards. I saw this guy's cowboy hat. He seems nice, but I don't like it. Pretty much any game that requires my boyfriend to start at the beginning when he dies is just a no for me, dog. It's just kind of boring. I don't care that he's gradually getting stronger. I don't care about all the possible synergies and character builds. I just want to be entertained if I'm watching a game and I'm freaking bored of these boogers, man. I can't even tell what's happening most of the time. It's cluttered with enemies, the combat is lightning fast, and literally everything is exploding always. Kill an enemy? Explosion. Pick up an item, explosion. Eat Taco Bell, explosion. That's not related, but it's true. Lots of times my boyfriend would laugh and say, whoa, did you see that? And I'd be like, well, my eyes were open and pointed at the TV, but the only way I can describe what I saw is diarrhea Christmas lights, so no. Now, I know I've been a little bit negative about these last two games, but only because as a non-player, it's harder to get invested in a 2D arcade-like experience than something cinematic with voice acting and state-of-the-art motion capture. That's why I think the last game in this video is so special. Hollow Knight. Every frame of animation in Hollow Knight is hand-drawn, and it might be the most unique art direction I've ever seen in a video game. The artist paints you in a world called Hollow Nest, the post-apocalyptic ruins of an insect civilization. The fact that anyone could turn such a disgusting nightmare into an adorable dream is incredible. But what's more is the entire game was made by only three people. And it's huge! Every location deep within Hollow Nest has its own color scheme, architecture, enemies, music, and serves a function in the 
world and plot. I think my favorite place had to be City of Tears. The rain combined with the abandonment and the music just makes me want to cry. <gasps> That's why it's called that. Or I'm just a huge mess. Although I did love when he would visit the caterpillar who lost his babies, cause look how happy he is when you rescue them. Aw, it actually does make me wanna cry. I love them. The art style isn't the only reason I couldn't look away from Hollow Knight. The controls and combat are so simple that it's easy to follow. Unlike Diary of Christmas Lights. Yet they require so much precision and skill that it felt like my boyfriend slowly became the knight. The game was actually pretty difficult for him right up until his fifth or sixth attempt at fighting these mantis boys. Then suddenly something clicked and he was like, After that, the difficulty came in perfectly timed ways. And right when we thought he'd become overpowered, the developers were like, oh, word? Here's deepness, try not to poop your pants. He'd often be lost, low on health, and scared. But then there'd be a lull in one of those perfectly timed difficulty waves, and we'd hear this. That's when you know you can relax, cause this guy's gonna give you a map and provide some much needed comic relief. Also, check out his trophy wife. Wow, good for you chubby map guy. So, I think Hollow Knight is gonna be the first game on Girlfriend Reviews where I have nothing to complain about. He's just so cute, oh my god I die. Look at him running around, little cape, arms and legs tucked in, little face, oh. So what have I learned about indie games? Well. I think small teams pulling their limited resources and limitless talent together to create works of art they love is what makes us love them. When you see what just a few passionate developers can release, and usually at a much lower cost, it really makes you question what the heck is going on at some of these AAA studios. It's apparent that the gaming industry likes cash grabbing just as much as the music industry or Hollywood, and quality is ultimately what pays the price. Indie games, much like indie bands or indie films, are where you'll find passion projects. Artists with a vision who are thinking outside of the box and have something to prove. You probably won't see any mind-blowing CGI in an indie film, and you probably won't play an indie game with 60 voice actors. But in both cases, you will see how limitations require creativity and innovation to get noticed. When a company has millions invested in marketing and already knows how many copies and microtransactions they'll sell, do they even need to make a good game? Okay you guys, next week is our review of The Last of Us. We know how bad you want it. How does watching us play it on Twitch sound? Cause that's what we're gonna do. Be sure to follow us at Girlfriend Reviews and stay tuned tonight. It will be our first stream ever, so if we mess it up, don't make fun. Alright, see you guys then. Bye and Happy New Year!